Today we're going to continue our discussion of position time graphs, looking specifically at the things they can tell us about the motion of an object. So let's say I had a position time graph that looked like this. We would say that this object is moving in the positive direction um, at some relatively quick speed. Um, if we then put in another graph, similarly, like this, we would say that that red graph was also moving in the positive direction, but at a slower speed. If we put in a different color graph, we would say that that object in that graph was moving still in the positive direction, but at a much quicker speed. And the way that we're actually determining that is we're looking at the slope of each of these lines to determine how much position is changing over the same time interval. So in this case, if we all look at the same time interval here, we would say that green traveled further in that same time interval, purple traveled further than red, and red traveled the least distance, therefore red was traveling the slowest, or red had the slowest speed, or red had the lowest positive velocity. Um, now, the positive direction from that is determined from the sign of the slope. In this case, all of these are positives, but I could just as easily have drawn them so that these objects were traveling in the negative direction. If they're traveling in the negative direction, then they're simply going back towards my, uh, my, my origin point. So maybe something like that, something like that, and we'll add in one more, something like that. In that case, then, the red object would be traveling the quickest in the negative direction, then the purple, then the green. Now, what if I were to then take these objects, and instead of making them separate object, objects, I make it one object whose slope is changing. So let's look at something like this. I have an object that starts like this, then it's like that, then it's like that. Now notice this object starts off and it's traveling relatively slow relative to the other motions that it's about to take. It's traveling relatively slow, then it quickly changes speed and it's moving much quicker in the positive direction with a positive velocity, then it quickly changes speed and it's traveling much quicker in the positive direction with a positive velocity. We could figure out what each of these velocities are by actually calculating the slope of this line or calculating the slope of this line or calculating the slope of this line. Now, what if instead of we had very three very specific um, points that we were looking at, or three very specific shapes of lines, what if instead we had something that looked like this? Where instead of having very specific points, we have a nice smooth curve that we're looking at. There isn't a very specific point that we can look at. Well, in a case like this then, we still want to try and be able to determine a velocity of the object, maybe at specific points. But instead of finding an average velocity like we would for a sloped line, something like this, where we're picking two points on the line, and then we're drawing and determining our slope from that, with something like this, we would determine an instantaneous velocity. And when I say instantaneous velocity, I mean that we're determining the velocity at some instant in time. So, for example, we're determining the velocity at one second. What is the velocity at the one second mark? And the way that we do this is still the same. We're still going to determine a slope. However, we can't determine the slope of this line because it's not a line. It's a curve. So then what we have to do is we have to pick an instant in time and determine the slope at that instant in time by saying, okay, maybe my instant in time is 0.5 seconds for example, or better yet, let's say 1.5 seconds, since that's right in the middle, it'll be easy to draw. 1.5 seconds. Well, I can't really determine a slope of that line. It's not really a line, but what I can do is I can draw a line tangent to this, and tangent meaning that it's only going to hit the line at that one point, and I can determine the slope of that line. And determining the slope of that line tells me the instantaneous velocity of the object. Well, luckily for us, we have this point here, we have this point here. So I would say that this point is at 2 and, let's see, what is this scaled by? 2, let's see, 2 seconds and 92 centimeters. And this point is at 1.1 seconds and 4832 centimeters. So using those two points, 
I could figure out what the instantaneous velocity at 1.5 seconds is. And the way that I would do that is I would say, well, my instantaneous velocity is the slope of this line. So, 92 minus 32 centimeters over 2 seconds minus 1.1 seconds, which is 60 centimeters in 0.9 seconds, or uh, 66.67 centimeters per second. Now, with that instantaneous velocity, then what that means is that at 1.5 seconds, my velocity is 66.67 centimeters per second. Now, I could figure out what the velocity is at 0.5, at 1, at 1 1.5, at 2, and at 2.5, simply by following that same procedure. Picking that point, drawing a tangent line to that point, finding two points on that tangent line, and determining their slope. So I know right now that at a time of, oops, 1.5 seconds, my velocity is 66.67 centimeters per second. Now, why is that useful? Well, first off, it tells me how fast the object is traveling at that point. Second off, what I can do then is I could say, okay, here I have a blank sheet of graph paper, and I know that at this point I'm traveling 66.67, which who knows how fast I'll be traveling at the end point, because I'll need that if I'm going to make a graph and scale it. But I know at 1.5 seconds I'm traveling 66.67, so let's just make up a scale here without doing the rest of it. I don't want to give away the ending to you. 20, 40... 60, 80, 100, for example, and over here we're looking at a velocity in centimeters per second, because that's what our position is in. So at 1.5 seconds, I'm going to be at 66, so 64, 68, so somewhere in the middle. My velocity at 1.5 seconds would go right there. Then I can determine my velocity at 1, I can determine my velocity at 0.5, at 2, and at 2.5. And what I'll see is that my velocity is changing throughout that point in time. In reading that graph then, I can see that now my representations for these two graphs would match. Based on that then, I can make comparisons. I can determine additional things, such as, what is the rate that my velocity is changing? Or... In which direction is my velocity changing? Both are very important to uh, understanding the motion of an object. So, quick reminder, if I'm looking at a linear position time graph, a linear position time graph tells us that an object is traveling in a specific direction at a constant rate. If it's changing very rapidly, or I'm sorry, changing very quickly like this, then we could very easily just pick two points on the line find the slope of those two points, and we can figure out how my velocity changed at each of those. Now, if it's a curve, then it's much harder to just pick very specific lines. So in order to do that, I'm going to find an instantaneous velocity by picking a point at specific times, drawing a tangent line to those points, picking two points on my tangent line that aren't the point I marked, finding the slope of my tangent line from those two points, and then plotting my velocity, my instantaneous velocity versus time, on a new velocity versus time graph. Now you've been given a note sheet, which is set up very easily for you to be able to do this. In fact, I can write in my points here um, in the 1.5 second mark and calculate my slope. Okay. So then you should be able to draw a velocity time graph from your instantaneous velocities.